So we are continuing with the introduction for the path of the just, Mesilat Yesharim. And the Rochal says the following. It says, you know, regarding the people's attitude towards looking uh, perfection in the, or, or elevation in the Avodat Hashem. To, and it refers to what he calls Yirah. It says, what Shlomo Melech said in, in Mishlei, Im tevakeshena kachesef uchematmonim techapesena, if you're going to seek it and look after it and desire it and cherish it as you would do for money and silver or as treasures, like a person is possessed looking for a treasure, a person is cherished and desires to have money. If you would seek, you have this attitude, then only you would understand what Yerat Hashem is. To have awe of God, or fear of God, to be a uh, observant person, you need to have this attitude. In other words, you have to look for it like a possessed person. A normal, it doesn't say, as tavin philosophia, you understand philosophy, or you're going to become wiser, or you would know medicine, or you understand law, or you understand halachot. Ela as tavin yirat Hashem. Only then you will understand what yirat Hashem is to understand. First, you need to understand. Of course, then you have to achieve it. But if you don't set aside the time, and the Ramchal writes, he says everybody, everybody is busy doing many things. He says everything that evolves wisdom or acquire knowledge. People are very, they set aside time, they have to go to college, they have to do these things, you know, they set aside time, oh, I'm sorry, Rabbi, I have to stop uh, learning, I have to go to college. It says, Why would a person set aside time to contemplate on what is Yirat Hashem? Why? Because you don't really want it. You do everything very superficially. You don't really want it. If you would see it, you, you would understand the importance of it. And that's what we said last time. Yirat Hashem hi chokhmah. Heaven, Yirat Hashem, is wisdom. And now we're going to talk about the levels that it says on Moshe Rabbeinu when it says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu from you, Lira, and so on and so forth. So it goes like this. Ha or or fear of God, is to have awe and fear from the greatness and awesomeness of God. You have to be fearful from Him. If you would, I mean, even if you stand in front of the United States President, you know, you would be very respectful. But by all means, it's not the same if you would stand chas v'shalom instead of a rasha like Stalin. If somebody brings you to a meeting like Stalin, that you know that on the spot it can head your head off. Fear. We don't have this fear for God. V'yivosh migdulato, and you should be embarrassed by his greatness. On every movement that you're going to make, you have to have this greatness in front of you. Kolshiken, even more so, when you're coming to pray in front of God. HaKadosh Baruch gives you permission to learn Torah. You have to be very respectful when you learn it. You have to be very careful when you learn it. That's what they say, the Gemara says, if you learn Torah and you say, ooh, what a beautiful flower that is, wow, amazing. Mitchayev ben Afshel, you're putting yourself in danger, why? I mean, HaKadosh Baruch created a beautiful rose, a beautiful flower, but you don't understand the year out of the Torah, because when you learn Torah, the Shekhinah comes to, comes to, to, you, to you as well, and all of a sudden you leave everything to the side, you do it with something else. The next one. Halicha bedrachav, walking in his path, in his way. That would include kol inyan yosher hamidot v'tikunam. That would include 
everything that has to do with perfecting and aligning appropriately your qualities and your merits, the way you conduct yourself. What Chazal told us in Masachet Shabbat Dav Kuf Lamad Gimel, Mahu Rachanun Verachum Afata Chanun Verachum. What is a Kadosh Baruch merciful? You should be like that. What is he kind? You should be kind as well. Vekalal Kol Zen included all of it. Sheinaga Adam Kol Midotav Lekol Mine Peulato Alpi Yashar Veamusar. In other words. That a person should measure mida, mida is a quality, a trait, a, 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 right? Mm-hmm. But we say he has mida ra. But mida is also measurement. <clears throat> In other words, the way you act and the way you behave needs to be so well calculated as if you are measuring something. If you're going to a chemistry lab and you're just pouring things like this, you might explode the whole entire building. Everything needs to be measured. That's why you call mida. The way you act has to be, first of all, thought after. And you need to measure it. Why? Because based on your behavior, on your midot, on your measurements, you are being measured. That's how you are. They have people evaluate you. So you need to think about it. And it says, "Sheina kol adam kol midotav kol perulotav al pi ayosher vehamusar." All your actions, all your doings, should be conducted based on straight yashar. You should be honest vehamusar. In other words, they have to be dignified. I'll give you an example. You cannot walk in the street or step outside of your house wearing flip-flops and sweatpants. It's not dignified. It's very simple. Kol Sheken coming to yeshiva and learning with flip-flops. That's why I don't tell you guys, you have to wear a jacket, you have to wear a hat, you have to wear this. But I do tell you, you have to come with your, you know, cut your hair, trim your face, clean, look clean, dress up nicely, dress up appropriately. I don't like long hair. I think long hair is a very undignified way. And at least this is how it's been measured in our time. Yes, maybe the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, you would have curls and so on and so forth. But we don't leave at that time. And you're not a hippie, you're not a bitnik. If you don't know what bitnik is, you know, I'll explain to you later, you youngsters. But, you know, you have to look dignified. You have to come shaved. If you have a beard, you have a beard. If you don't have a beard, come clean shave. But you can't come with a stubble that you can't, you know, one day you go like this, one day you go like that. The length of your beard is fine. But if you don't have a beard, you expect it to shape because that's dignified. Yes, those things would matter. Why would it matter? And I'll tell you this very simple. When you go to the army, the possession, people are obsessed, they are possessed by how you dress and you tuck yourself in and you tie, put your shoes in and you tie your... There will even be OCD about how you put your belt. Why do you care if I put my belt this way, the buckle this way, or I'll put it that way? I'll tell you, it makes a difference. Because if you come and Chaz Shalom, you were injured in a battle, and he comes to open your belt, he doesn't need to figure out which way you put it, you don't put it, you put it. Your life could be dependent on it. You dressed the way you think. If you're messy, you think messy. You have to be clean. It's for your benefit. The last one for today is Ahava, love. Sheyenikba. And by the way, I just want to tell you that it says uh, before Alicha Bet Rachav, it says Kol Aolech El Tachlita Atava Amitit. If you do it in a in the right way, 
דהיינו שתולדתה, the derivative of that will be חיזוק התורה ותיקון אחוות המדינה. That will be, that's how you strengthen the Torah, by having your measurement, by your midot, appropriated and fixed. This is how you מחזק your Torah. You dignify it. Dignified people don't do undignified things. It's a disgrace when you find a president or, or prime minister or any person or mayor all of a sudden in a scandal that it was found or governor, it was found somewhere in who knows what in, a, in doing who knows who. It's a disgrace. But if you're dignified, People were, you never find, for example, Margaret Thatcher in a disgraceful manner because she was a, a dignified woman. Just an example. Uh, so the Ahava, she and it should be implanted and engraved in your heart. Your love towards God, engraved. Add unto the point. To the point that your soul would be awakened that you want to do good for him. When you love someone, you want to do good for them. When you love with yourself, you want others to do good to you. And he writes, the same thing as you want to do something good for your parents. To give them nachat ruach. To give him some, some satisfaction, some joy, some point of pride in you, the Yitzhak will be very sorry. If you, for whatever reason, disappointed your parents or you acted in disrespect to them. One should derive great joy when he does something. When he has the opportunity to express his love. So if you Sunday at home and you uh, you know uh, you get married, but right now your parents are home on Sunday, nobody is working. Nothing will happen to you if you say to your parents, "Would you like me to make you breakfast for Sunday? What would you like, Mom? Uh, I don't know. Give me some toast. No, nothing though." I'll make you some toast, some butter on top. You want two sunny side up eggs. Dad, what do you want? You want some grits? With... Yes, I want this. Why not? You do this to your parents. What will happen to you? Nothing will happen to you. But what, will, what would you gain? You will gain to, to show and express your love by action, not by just empty words. Because if somebody asks you, do you love your parents? You will say, of course I do, because you don't want to look like a whatever. This is no, I don't love my parents. But you really don't really love them, because when was the last time you did something for your parents that it was an action of love, not because they asked you to do that? Have a great day.